This video is an introduction to the separation of ions by fractional precipitation. This is a technique that we use when we have a mixture of ions in solution and we want to separate those ions from each other. And we're going to look at two examples of fractional precipitation. The first one, let's say that we have a solution that contains barium ions and potassium ions and we want to separate them from each other. To, to do this, we're going to look for an anion, a negatively charged ion, that will precipitate barium but not potassium, or vice versa. So we want to find an anion that will form an insoluble solid with barium or with potassium, but not with both. There's two different ways that we can find this anion, and there's also multiple anions that we could use for this precipitation. Um, one thing that you can do is consult your solubility rules, and this is just sort of looking, um, I don't want to say guessing and checking, but you're just looking for an anion that will form an insoluble solid with either barium or potassium. Now right away I can see barium, this is what we're working with. So I'm going to take a look at this solubility rule here. It says that soluble ionic compounds contain sulfate with the exception of barium sulfate. So that tells me that if I add sulfate to this solution, I will precipitate barium sulfate as a solid, but the K2SO4 will stay dissolved because it's soluble. And so that's perfect. That's all that we need. Um, we could also find the correct anion by consulting a table of KSP values. And there are, like I said, there are multiple anions that we could use for this, for this separation. Um, so for example, if we look at our uh, phosphates, you can see that barium phosphate is insoluble. It has a very small KSP. But potassium phosphate isn't on here, which means potassium phosphate is soluble. So you could also use a phosphate ion to separate the two from each other. There's more than one right answer to this problem. For our next example, we're going to consider something a little bit trickier. Let's say that we have a solution of chloride ions and bromide ions, and we want to separate them from each other. Well, if we look at our solubility rules um, or our KSP table, we're going to see that there isn't a cation that we can add that will precipitate one but not the other. Let's just look at our um, KSPs. You can see for our insoluble chlorides, they are lead, silver, mercury, and our bromides are also lead, silver, mercury. And so we cannot find a cation that's going to separate one but not the other. We're going to have to use a cation that will actually um, precipitate both chloride and bromide. But we can take advantage of the fact that they have different KSP values and different levels of solubility. Um, so because silver bromide has a smaller KSP than silver chloride, if we add only a little bit of silver ion, we'll precipitate the silver bromide because it is less soluble and it will form a solid first. We just want to make sure we don't add too much. If we add too much silver, um, then we're going to precipitate out silver chloride as well. So what we're doing here is taking advantage of the fact that these two compounds have different KSP values. They will precipitate out of solution at different times. This one will come out first, this one will come out second, and we're going to try to find that sweet spot adding exactly enough or just enough silver to get silver bromide to come out, but not enough silver to precipitate out AgCl. So we're going to have to do some math to figure out what that magic number is of silver. How do you know how much silver to add so that silver bromide precipitates and silver chloride doesn't? Let's just say for this solution we found that the chloride ion concentration was 0.05 and bromide was 0.04 in the solution that we're trying to separate. And what we're going to do first is calculate how much silver is enough to get the silver bromide to come out. We're going to use the equilibrium uh, equation and the equilibrium expression for silver bromide and we know silver bromide's KSP, we know the concentration of bromide, so we're going to calculate the concentration of silver that we need to precipitate AGBR. And that's with this right here, 7.7 .7 times 10 to the minus 13, which is the KSP. 0.04, which is the concentration of bromide, that tells us that we need only 1.9 times 10 to the minus 11 molar silver. That's a really um, dilute solution. So that gives us, that tells us um, the minimum amount of silver that we need to get silver bromide to come out. But remember, we don't want to add too much silver because if we add too much, we're also going to precipitate silver chloride at the same time. So our second calculation is to figure out how much is too much 
uh, how much silver is too much? When will the silver chloride start to precipitate? We're going to do the same um, problem solving here using the equation for silver chloride and the equilibrium expression for silver chloride and calculating how much sil silver will precipitate given the KSP of silver chloride and the concentration of chloride ions. And that is 3.2 times 10 to the minus 9. So somewhere in between these two numbers is where we want to be. We have to have at least this much in order to get the silver bromide to precipitate, but we don't want to have this much so that silver chloride will not precipitate.